Digital Devil Saga 1 was a game that left us with a lot of questions in the end, wasn't it? After the ending being a rather sudden, rocks fall, everyone dies sort of affair, we were left with many unanswered queries. Who's Sarah? Who's Angel? Who are we? What's the deal with the junkyard? What's the deal with the demon powers? Well, I hope you're ready to wait a little longer because this game ain't going to explain shit for a little while. So, our game begins with some exposition. We are in Nirvana, the Nirvana we were trying to reach for the entirety of the last game. However, rather than a paradise, this place is a rather bleak affair. It clearly seems to be a post-apocalyptic version of Earth. And this Earth and the people living in it are faced with a number of problems. First is the phenomenon known as the Black Sun. Several years ago, the sun, for reasons yet unknown to us, gained a darker sheen. And from that point on, anyone exposed to the sunlight would be turned to stone by a disease known as the Cuvier Syndrome. As a result, the majority of humanity was forced to move deep underground, away from the harmful sun's rays. However, at this point, having lived underground for a while, the sun is the least of their problems. Because now they also have to deal with something known as the Karma Society. A religious slash scientific society being run by a mysterious woman known as Madame. <gasps> Do you think she'll give me a Cerberus too? Uh, I bet she's not as cool as that. Anyways, the Carbon Society claims that their goal is to establish order and work towards finding a cure for the Cuvier Syndrome. But, of course, in reality they are a far more sinister group than just that ideal. They have a massive militia of guards who go around abducting people to be used in whatever sort of experiments go on inside the Karma Society. They're also, potentially, most likely, being abducted as food. For you see, the key defining trait of the Karma Society's militiamen is that they are all able to transform into demons. Funnily enough though, for whatever reason, it seems like people who are able to transform into demons are immune to the effects of the Black Sun and are able to walk around the surface freely. Whatever the case, it certainly is a tough time being an ordinary human here in Nirvana. And here is where we finally rejoin with our old friends. The game actually begins with Surf, Argilla, and Gale. The three of you somehow manage to track one another down. Unfortunately, there's no signs of Cielo or Heat about, but they're capable enough. All you can really do is hope that they're alright as well. However, in their place you have met with a couple of locals. Two children to be precise, named Fred and, uh... You know, I uh, don't actually know what the other kid's name is. Whatever, he's not really that important. But Fred is, and uh, he's able to fill the three of you in on what the heck is going on in this alien world. That being said, Fred obviously doesn't really trust you. I mean, you don't seem like Karma Society types, but that doesn't really make you trustworthy. So, Gale decides to make a deal with Fred. Apparently, Fred has a couple of friends who have been taken prisoner by the Karma Society, where they'll be presumably either experimented on or eaten. So, Gale offers that if Fred can show us the way to the Karma Society's headquarters, we will help him rescue his comrades. It works out for us too, since the Karma Society is probably the most likely place where we could potentially find clues about Sarah or our other friends. So Fred agrees, saying he doesn't know the exact way to reach the Karma Society, but he does know somebody who does. And so you follow Fred into the new world that lays ahead of you. Well, 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 if it isn't a couple of lost lambs. Ah, uh, these must be those Karma Society creeps we heard about. Oh, you look especially tasty. I think I'll bite into you. Ah, and of course they're fucking creeps. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I do not comprehend. What's there to comprehend, big guy? <laughs> we're gonna turn into demons, and then we're gonna eat ya. No, what I do not comprehend is why we would not simply eat you first. Well, 
Um, looks like your skills, you crude in the junkyard, are still going to be useful here. It also looks like somehow the Karma Society already knows who you are, at least vaguely. But that is all the more reason to try and reach their headquarters and get some answers. So you continue on your path, defeating a number of Karma Society goons as you go, until eventually you arrive at a small settlement where Fred and a number of other refugees supposedly hide out away from the Karma Society's prying eyes. But you find it is already being assaulted by a Vitala and a pair of Andros. After Fred and his friend get in a good taunt before <laughs> cowering behind you, uh, you promptly kick the collective demon's asses and enter the compound. Welcome to the Lokapala headquarters. The Lokapala are a small little resistance group that Fred's a part of that are fighting back against the Karma Society. After a somewhat tense introduction, the Lokapala reveal that they know Cielo, so you agree to meet with the Lokapala's leader to get as much information as you can from them. And you are led to a small room where you meet with a man named Roland. I hope Fred wasn't much trouble. I became his guardian after his father died. Where is Cielo? Well, we thought the society sent him. Your friends nearby. What is this? You know, you don't seem artificial. What do you mean? Take a look. The junkyard? Actually, it's called Asura Project. Stage one. It's a VR designed for urban warfare. Huh? What's that mean? You guys, and that world you were in, are programs the Cyber Shaman created for the society. Dude, you seriously need to lay off the booze. The Asura Project. It was designed to develop combat enhancement AI, to be implanted in live soldiers. You were going to be programmed into microchips. Stage one is a coliseum for selecting the most effective AI. It's a purgatory born of wisdom that man stole from God. The war will escalate. God has cursed us all. God? Yes, God. 30 years ago, at the end of the 20th century, Crises erupted worldwide. Mutated pathogens, abnormal weather patterns, collapsed ecosystems, and the QVA syndrome. Historically, a genius always emerges in troubled times. Ten years ago, one such individual found the source of these problems. Jenna Angel. She was part of the International Environmental Stabilization Committee. Oh, it's her! But your hopes, your hopes and, beliefs and beliefs are utterly, are utterly worthless. worthless. She stated the disasters were caused by data from the sun, hidden discreetly within its rays. The sun, a gigantic body of accumulated data. She said he was there from the beginning, influencing Earth and its development. That places him on God's level. And what does this God have to do with us? Man is God's accursed son. We use our knowledge to find new ways of killing. The society was formed to survive our tribulation, but the army corrupted it, and you were created. However, knowledge alone cannot create a perfect AI. The Cyber Shaman? You said she created us. A medium between God and man. 
She is the only one with the ability to extract data from God, the Society's very foundation. Sarah works for the Society? We risked our lives for her. You're saying none of that matters? You can't fight your programming. Sarah cared about us! An artist can feel love for her masterpiece sometimes. Shut up! Calm yourself. Tell me, how did you learn of all this? We have a mole in the society. How can you verify the information's authenticity? This disk of composite data, we received it just before you arrived. A complex electromagnetic wave pattern. Our test subject became a demon like you. And then, of course, there's your existence. God, shaman. We have to believe. Holy shit, that's a lot to dump on us. We are AIs, Sarah created us, God's a real entity who lives in the sun, who Sarah can apparently talk to, and to top it all off, Angel is a supposedly brilliant scientist who discovered all this. It is a lot of information, but it still doesn't explain everything. Like, why did Sarah create us, or why is she working with the Karma Society? Who the heck are we? Are we literally just AI? Then, like, why do we have memories of the real world? What, what the heck's going on? Well, for now, the only way to find out about that is to ask Sarah herself. So, for now, we move on to the more pressing issue. Why exactly is the Locopala meeting with us? Get to the point. What is it you want? Bring us the Cyber Shaman. It's her fault that there are orphans like Fred. But without the Shaman's power, we have no hope. And in exchange... We'll give you the infiltration route and all necessary supplies. Hmm. <laughs> While Cielo remains captive, unacceptable. What? You mentioned a test subject who became like us. We need manpower. You're saying you want us to become monsters? A slip of the tongue. I did not ask you to accompany us. Unless the test subject cannot. You killed him. Is that true? Roland? He, he could have lost control. We had to. This is nothing but coercion. You have no honor. Uh, how dare you slander us! It may be true that we become frightful monsters. However, the people of the junkyard fought for their very survival. I will not accept that it was all just an illusion. You were the people of Nirvana. Lupa died in vain. I see. You needn't say anything. We will agree to your terms. Not to help you. Sarah's sake, and for Fred. Gil! Take care of Cielo.
Well, hot diggity damn, Gail, that was the verbal equivalent of a pimp slap. But regardless of the multitude of information that's now come your way, at the end of the day, your destination hasn't really changed. You still need to head for the Karma Society. And despite your alliance with the Locopala being shaky at best, you're at the very least able to gather both the information and resources necessary to reach the Karma Society from them. And so you begin your trek to reach the headquarters, a long journey guarded by any number of Karma guards. Taiwan, the Pebble Sags, Lamias, Mizuchis, you name it. But as you go along, we are treated to a scene going on elsewhere. A scene of our good old friend, Angel. She refuses to obey us after losing her friends. Has it already been five years? She used to be so small. Inside, she's still just a seven-year-old. We'll proceed according to guideline and initiate the lobotomy procedure. Jenna, have you lost your heart? She was born of your own sperm and egg. She's your daughter. Do you hate her? Or are you jealous? Please, I'm not that narrow-minded. This body is the least of my concern. And we begin to worry as we grow old. Like me, I'm concerned because you've been acting as if you hate everything. Madame Margot, I admit that I have changed. However, I haven't forsaken humanity yet. Good to hear. The surgery will not be necessary. Are you planning to delay the Nirvana Project? Ma'am, there you are. I regret to inform you that some of our information was leaked. Ah. Uh. How did this happen? How much information was compromised? We're investigating now. An old fiber optic cable was still operational. I've sent troops to check it out. We're trying our best to determine suspects. Ah, oh, what a headache. What is her plan? And why would the operation be unnecessary? Hmm, <sighs> seems like the Karma Society has issues of its own. Well, regardless, Surf and the others eventually manage to make it through the winding back alleyways that make up the majority of this world, and reach the outskirts of the Karma Society HQ, where they meet up with the Locopola Mole who was waiting for you. He's pretty on edge, probably worried his status as a mole might get found out. You start probing him for information on how to actually enter the facility, but before he can tell you much, your party has a surprising couple of visitors. Hey guys! Yep, Yellow is back, and surprisingly, Roland has infected himself with the demon virus and offers to join your party in the rescue effort. I guess Fred talked some sense into him and he realized his past mistakes. Which is good news because you've now almost doubled your manpower. So with Roland and Cielo in tow, you set about your plan to infiltrate the Karma Society HQ. First off, you'll break into the internment facility where the Karma Society is keeping all its prisoners. There, you'll kill two birds with one stone. First, it will save a whole bunch of innocent people, including fulfilling your promise with Fred to rescue his comrade. 
Secondly, as the prisoners escape with the aid of the Lokapala forces, the Karma Society guards will be split trying to stop them, which should leave the main HQ building much less heavily protected and far easier for your group to infiltrate. So first things first, the internment facility, which starts out looking like a pretty typical warehouse, but eventually evolves into... <sighs> Something that brings to mind memories of the Puck Dungeon from Shin Megami Tensei 2. So, you reach a prison block where you find a combonded jailer waiting for you, who is, for whatever reason, impossible to beat. So, you have to do a very annoying game of Ring Around the Rosies, where if you get cut... Ugh, well with that torturous part of the journey out of the way, you set in plan a motion to get rid of the prison guard. You basically plan on poisoning his food with a blob, which makes him weaker and allows you to defeat him. And boy, you can bet I cherish defeating him. With him defeated, you are able to save the prisoners and successfully liberate the warehouse. So, everything is set in motion to go and rescue Sarah. But before you do, Gail notices something Fred is clutching in his hands. Why do I still have this stupid thing? Lupa, what shall I tell your child? Tell him to become a man of honor. You Fred, where did you get that? My dad gave it to me. Olive leaves are symbols of peace. But I'm too old for that now. I gotta grow up! So I can be strong! Fred. I have a message from Lupa, your father. He told me that... He wants you to grow up as an honest child. You know my dad? Be proud of your feelings, Fred. It's okay to be a kid. What do you know? Fred was Lupa's kid all along. It's a small, small digital world after all. In any case, with your distraction set and the Locopala visitors freed, you head off to the Karma Society's headquarters in the hopes of finally getting some answers and rescuing Sarah. And, uh, unsurprisingly, I guess, despite your distraction working outside, the inside of the Karma Society HQ still has more than enough guards to keep you occupied. So you slowly but surely eat your way through the many different floors and varieties of demons until eventually you come across, uh, what I can only describe as this game's version of that, only somehow even more sexually charged. Nice! He's definitely my type. <laughs> the chick looks pretty tasty too. She's really just data. 
I heard they were original models. Don't underestimate them. They may not look like much, but they made it all the way here, didn't they? Who are you? <laughs> That's so cute. We're your enemies. Anyways, these three, uh, Ganga, uh, Kuseth, and then Ubelarus, all gang up to try and take you on. But don't really offer all that much of a challenge. Oh, damn, they're tough. Fall back, now! I remember this beast! Huh? I'm gonna kill you all! Whoa, what a freak! Sheesh! Where did they find these guys? <laughs> God damn it, game. With them out of the way, it seems like the main line of defense between you and Sarah has been defeated and you make your way, uh... You bastards! I'm lucky to be alive! That fall could have killed me! <laughs> Wait, what? They're back already? Are, are you allowed to do that? Uh, so you fight them again? Only this time they have a big team attack thingy that's kind of annoying. But other than that, they're not much harder and you defeat them again? Uh, okay, uh, let's try this again. With them out of the way, it seems like the main line of defense between you and Sarah has been defeated. And you make your way, uh... Sarah's not here. Ah, uh, not this again. <laughs> Oh, come the fuck up it. What is it now? Uh... Heat? What are you? Yes, Heat is back. But he doesn't appear to be the lovable, upbeat scamp we all grew to love in the last game. Before you can question him on what the hell he thinks he's doing, a monitor on the other side of the room turns on. You get to have your first conversation with the head of the Karma Society. Sarah! My name is Margot Cuvier. You may call me Madame. You've already been made aware that you are just AIs that Sarah created. But unlike the others, you were all special to her because of something unfortunate. That's why Heat is helping us. Ugh, Heat? This is just another act, right? At this rate, you'll never be anything but marionettes. The only difference is who's controlling you. Meaning what, exactly? The person who's been pulling your strings is... Jenna Angel. Sarah's natural parent. Angel? She's Sarah's mother? Her father as well, to be precise. She convinced the Lokapala to abduct Sarah so she could bring us both down. What could she be scheming? I too have questions. What is your goal? Mankind, because of its own foolishness, is facing total extinction. Man's insatiable greed destroyed the environment which had protected us from God's malignant data. We tried to help, but our warnings were ignored. You mean the QVA syndrome? Ah, so then you altered God to purge the sinners? That was an unfortunate accident. I want only to sow mankind's seed for the future. Otherwise, we will vanish from Earth entirely. What we need is order, and bodies that can survive in this hostile environment. Our city does have a limit after all. So you turn everyone into demons? 
just to resume living under the sun? <laughs> That's totally insane! Demons have to devour each other to survive. And if they lose control... That is why we will exercise control. The junkyard experiment provided us with an effective demon virus. Using Sarah, mental deterioration can be prevented. And so, food supply is the only remaining concern. Oh, that's why you farmed out Fred's buddies. There are some organisms that deserve to live, and others that do not. In order to avoid past mistakes, you will decide who merits life. Order will decide. A world of tuners under our control, Nirvana, is the only way to preserve mankind. Pretty fucked up, isn't it? The Karma Society plans on keeping a manageable population of demons living in a so-called paradise. There, they'll use Sarah's song to control the rage of the demons and the underground people as their own personal farm. Obviously, you can't agree to join with something like that. What do I look like? Aleph? That fucking monster? Disappointed with your response, Madame orders Heat to destroy you. And it looks like this time, he's not just faking his allegiance. Well, Heat, this has been a long time coming. Time to give you a bit of payback for that shiner you gave me back when we were fighting Mick. And it's time for everyone's favorite part of the game, spamming the shit out of Void Fire. And so, Heat is defeated, and beats a hasty retreat. And you continue your endless march up the skyscraper. But at this point, it's only because you don't really have anywhere else to go. The way you came is quickly filling with returning Karma Society soldiers, and you already know Sarah isn't actually here, so you're basically forced to go the only direction you can. However, that does turn into something unexpected, because at the very pinnacle of the headquarters, you come into a massive office that belongs to a certain someone we've met before. It was well worth the wait. Take the gyroplane on the roof to the lab. You will find Sarah there. Why? Why do you help us? If they have their way, mankind will repeat its mistakes. You don't have to agree. Just kill Cuvier. Then we will be even. <sighs> what the hell is it you want, anyway? I want everyone to have an equal chance. The Karma Society is trying to control humanity's liberation. Liberation? Man is an aberration that suppressed karma and ignored the way. Our destiny is natural selection. The strong survive, the weak perish. What we need is not transient order, it's chaos. What of those who achieve liberation? They learn the meaning of life. To that end, you turn all of mankind into demons? so they can devour each other? <laughs> hey, what you laughing at? Asura's logic algorithm is flawless, save one side effect. Oh, and what is that? You seem to have acquired humanity. Tainted demons who become human. <laughs> what delicious irony. The universe is quite a comedian. This isn't some sick joke! You did this to us! <laughs> so then, I would have to assume you require Sarah as well. Intelligence can be a nuisance sometimes. No more questions. Well, what do you know? It looks like the old saying is true after all. The enemy of my enemy and, you know, all that. While you don't necessarily agree with Angel's end goal, which is basically the chaos ending in every other SMT, you can at least agree that Madame and the rest of the Karma Society are bad news. Plus, it looks like Angel's going through a few of her own issues. Regardless, with her help, you're given a uh, gyroplane, as she called it, and are able to safely escape from, uh, 
Okay, maybe safely isn't the right word, but you do manage to escape the Karma Society HQ and head for the coordinates Angel gave you where Sarah is supposedly being held. It's a, uh, laboratory of sorts. A place where Angel studied the effects of the sun turning people into stone, as well as inventing the demon virus to combat it. You head inside to find where Sarah is and find it to be, like, Literally everything else in this damn world, a damn maze full of dead ends, locked doors, and of course a bountiful harvest of demons just waiting to be devoured by your party. However, as you head deeper, you do find one thing of note. A massive demon frozen in a block of ice that supposedly appeared five years ago when the sun turned black. Hmm. Well, whatever the case, it's not Sarah, so you move on even deeper until you're right outside the deepest reaches of the lab. But like any good dungeon, you find the path before you blocked by a familiar face. The Ubelarus man from before. It doesn't appear like he's with his comrades this time. However, it turns out they most definitely still are present. Because in order to gain more power, he ate them, transforming himself into and a bad on. Wait a minute, now that I think about it, that's just a fusion, isn't it? Neato, is that what actually happens to my demons when I leave them with you? Whatever. A bad on is a bit of a tough customer as he's able to swallow party members whole and take them out of combat for long periods of time. But you manage to whittle him down regardless, and so the comedy trio, now reduced to a comedy solo, is defeated. The path is now open. There's nothing left standing between you Reuniting with Sarah. Sarah! Sarah! isn't even connected. Connection opened. It's transmitting from our side. Upload rate is... 
945.56 centipedes per second! That dwarfs even the incident five years ago! was a lot of info just dumped on us, so let's fill you in on what exactly happened here. Do so you remember how I said earlier that Sarah is the only cyber shaman, which means she can speak with God? Well, when she saw Surf getting impaled by heat, it caused her to understandably freak out, which in turn, somehow, managed to turn the surrounding systems on, sending all of her negative feelings directly to God. And God apparently didn't like him, because upon receiving all of Sarah's negative emotions, God began to absorb the entire planet. As such, the world starts to go a little nuts. People start fleeing in every direction, Gale takes charge as temporary leader of the Embryon, and Angel makes a bid for power. Your team are at a loss for what to do. Sarah is unconscious, Surf is dead, and the world is ending. Gail figures that the best course of action for the time being would be to try and stop the signal that is being relayed to God. And Roland suggests that the fastest way to do that would be to shut down the power plant powering this place. So that's where you head, and you find a number of Locopala forces already there waiting for you. But of course, it can't be just as simple as going inside and turning the damn thing off. The place is booby-trapped to hell and high water with locking mechanisms, demon guards, and these automatic sentry systems that are a pain in the butt. But the biggest worry of all is Angel. It looks like now that she's killed Madame and taken control of the Karma Society, our temporary truce is at an end. She's coming for us. The Locopala forces that were waiting outside try to buy you time as you make your way through the power plant. But as you near the end, Roland receives a communication. Some thing, some terrible thing, has broken through the Locopala line. Roland decides that he needs to return to his men, wishing you luck in shutting down the power plant. Your group leave things to Roland for the time being and continue on to the control center of the power plant, hoping against hope you'll be able to shut it down and end the transmission to God. That won't shut it down. A replica of God doesn't require man-made energy. How do we stop it? Roland? Did you stop the transmission? No, we can't. Don't give up. There has to be a way. Trick up my sleeve. Hello, 
overload the reactor and blow this place sky high. You need to get out of here. You can't do that! Fred, I'm sorry. It's all my fault that... Your dad died. I'm just a coward. I turned my back on him. He was my best friend. There's nothing we can do! Let go of me! Look! Everyone! They're risking their lives for you! Listen to me. You have to come to your senses. Please, Sarah, come on! Sorry, everyone. Take me back to the EGG. I'll try. I'll try to talk to God. You guys go. I'm gonna stay behind and help Roland. I'm sorry, Argilla. I want you to be brave. I'm sure Surf agrees. What do you mean? Help Roland. You can't fight that team. Hey, don't you worry about me. I'll catch up. Okay? Yes. Let's go. Indrajit! Well, I have something for you! How about you suck down the power of this whole damn city?
and just like that, Roland and Urgella are gone. Still, even at a moment like this, the faintest glimmer of hope still exists. Your last three party members, Gale, Cielo, and the newly awakened Sarah, all head off back to the laboratory, back to the EGG, in the hopes that maybe, just maybe, Sarah can have one last talk with God and convince him not to wipe out the planet. However, upon your arrival back at the plant, you, uh, find the place a bit more body horror-y than it was before. What's with this place? God's data must be leaking. The data comprising this entire area has already been corrupted. The EGG might be damaged. That would make this God's will. What is God, exactly? I can't really say. He is a being of vast greatness. Talking with God is different than talking to people. As he enfolds me, I can feel his will. That is conversing with God? I don't know if he... If he even has a distinct mind like us. Seriously? How are you gonna change his mind if he don't have one? I felt warmth in him. I think that the way people have lived and God destroying our world are related somehow. We ignored something very important, so... He just gave up? You see that as an opening for negotiation. Hey, what happened to I do not comprehend, eh, brother? I kinda miss it. Some things must be felt, not comprehended. Our comrades' deaths must not be in vain. <laughs> now that's character growth, baby. I do comprehend. Anyways, the three of you make your way into the dark depths of the laboratory, and find it now to be full of toxic floors, portals to nowhere, and even more powerful demons than before. But you press on, and eventually you do make it to the EGG's containment room. But it appears to have changed the most out of all these rooms. It looks like the researchers weren't the only things corrupted by God's data. Well, after what he did to Surf, I'd say he's got a few things to answer for. But, as you're busy battling heat above, down below you in the water surrounding the EGG, something is going on. It's Surf and, uh, the cat, who apparently can talk. Uh, he tells you the world is made up of data. Data that continuously cycles between here and God. And because that data is constantly cycling, because it always exists, he can show us the question we've always been looking for. Just who is Surf? How long are you going to keep this up? For crying out loud, Surf! She can't even live without that fluid! That's why you'll never surpass me. Since when did people start expecting science to be humane? To study the body, you cut it open. To study the mind, 
you isolate it by crushing the heart. Historically, that's how science has advanced. Sarah? You'll really let me go on a boat if I can talk for ten minutes? I promised, remember? <laughs> that guy's scary. Surf. Hands. Are we the baddies? <laughs> A fully cohesive virtual world? Number 19 created it outside of our knowledge. Not only that, but also AI programs with fully functional virtual egos. It's a worthless, sentimental playhouse she created for self-consolation. It's sickening. This is incredible. I'll draft the proposal immediately. You can't! Her mental and emotional stress is off the charts. She's aging at an accelerated rate. We can't risk pushing her even farther. Is this true? Don't be concerned, <gasps> Colonel Beck. There's an error in Samsara's data circulation system, code 8081454. Aborting stages two through five. <laughs> These EEG readings are all wrong. Her condition's critical. She should last a bit longer. Inject the stimulant. Can you hear me, Sarah? Hang in there. We're almost done. Enough! Don't be a hypocrite. You wanted to learn about God, didn't you? That's why you joined. If Sarah dies, we move on to the next child. If that child dies, we use another. That's how it works. Honestly, we shouldn't be wasting time on trivial arguments. I think we're both better than that. You're really something, you know that? You can't just manipulate people to do whatever the hell you want! <laughs> oh, can't I now? Simple, huh? The human heart is a machine. We can predict the outcome of any action. Considering my goal is God's power, people are just tools. Was the good guy all along. 
All right, let's uh, summarize quickly before continuing so everyone's on track here. An experiment was started five years ago using Angel's child, Sarah. Surf was the head researcher, and Heat and Argilla were two of his assistants in said experiment. They forced Sarah to communicate with God for them, which she was able to do, but it had detrimental effects on her body, notably rapidly increasing her aging process. Sarah, however, was willing to do the experiments due to her belief in Surf, who was in fact only putting on a fake facade whenever he talked to her. Still, the experiment itself was very painful on Sarah, so as a result, she ended up creating a little haven for herself. The Junkyard. Well, at the time, it wasn't the junkyard. It was a fun, happy-go-lucky place where she could play with several AI. She created it as stand-ins for important people in her life. But one day, Heat finally had enough, tried to stop Surf, and was killed by Argilla in the process. All according to Surf's plan. But unknown to Surf, he did not realize Sarah was listening in on what was going on. And upon Sarah realizing that everything she believed was a big fat lie, she inadvertently transmitted a stream of negative data directly to God, who in turn turned the sun black and brought upon the end of days we currently find ourselves in. Surf himself, caught in the stream of data being broadcast out from Sarah, was transformed into one of the first demons. It's a whole lot for Surf to deal with. I mean, who really is he at the end of the day? Is he the AI Sarah created of her ideal of Surf? Is he the asshole researcher who caused this whole mess to begin with? She spent five years here, sealing her heart shut. Her paradise became hell. She dreamt for a long time about you. Your original traits may reflect her perception of us. However, you are different now. You know what? Surf, the surf we know, is neither of those things. He's not the asshole researcher that caused everything, but neither is he a puppet created to fill a hole in Sarah's heart. Through everything he's been through, through the help of his comrades, through every event that we have traveled through in these two games, he has become his own entity. The one and only Surf. I'm not finished yet! <laughs> What the? Ah! Sir? Surf! It is you! Who else could it be? Surf wouldn't die. That'd be too easy. Well... Now do you see where I stand? out on their own. There are 
those who find identity in battle. For them, fighting may lead to salvation. Let him go. And, just like that, another member of your original party is gone. A man who maybe didn't always make the best choices, but he always followed what he believed in. Eat was a man who died with no regrets. Sir? Well, I mean, maybe he should regret that, but uh, whatever. The point being, the remaining number of Embryon continues to dwindle. Despite everything that's gone on here and all the resolutions we've come to, one fact still remains. The EGG was destroyed and Sarah was unable to communicate with God and ask him to stop destroying the world. However, she has a plan. There's still hope. I remember they were conducting some experiments in a facility far away from here. If it's still functional. We still couldn't reach it. There isn't time. I think we can still make it if we take an airplane. I will go to the sun myself. And ask God to return Earth to normal. You can do that? I haven't tried before, but I'll send my data. How will you return? I won't return. And that's why I'm going alone. It's my responsibility. Sarah, I am hurt. Why? Because you aren't asking me to help with negotiations. Oh, this is cute! Looks like you're pretty insecure beneath all that seriousness. <laughs> you can't be reasoning with God, bro. Maybe I could show him some jammy Latin rhythm, yeah? Oh yeah, baby. Dig it? I'm sure you would only anger him. Really? Then why don't we see which one of us can convince God first? Agreed. Well then, Sarah. Looks like you'll need to make reservations for three more. Thank you, everyone. Yep. No matter what happens, you're gonna do this together until the end. However, to get to the facility where Sarah can beam her consciousness to the sun, you're going to need to travel a very long distance. And the only way you'll be able to make it in time before the world itself is sucked up by God is if you take a plane. So you make plans to head towards the airport. But before you do, there's one last person you need to say goodbye to. Fred. I mean, he hasn't done a whole lot this game, but he has been with us this entire time. And well, where we're going probably isn't going to be a return trip. So, 
It's nice to know that there's someone we can leave behind. Someone to look after the Earth for us once we're gone. Your goodbye said, the four of you make your way through the airport in the hopes of finding an undamaged aircraft you can take to find this far off facility. Unfortunately, it looks like the place is swarming with enemies as there are a variety of demons waiting to ambush you as you make your way through the airport. Still, it's not like you haven't already overcome hordes of demons before. Shy of Angel herself showing up, I don't think there's anything that could really come close to stopping us at this, uh... I knew you'd come. Oh. Angel, please, you have to let us get through. Otherwise... You will die no matter what. Your body needs the inhibitor. Wouldn't you rather die here instead of growing old? and decrepit in the blink of an eye. Uh, how can you talk like that? You won't survive this thing either! She's aware of that. Go. What about our contest? We'll postpone it. I'll just give you the win, brother. Thanks, brother. Do you honestly think I'd leave the airplane intact? She's only bluffing. That's quite a gamble. How can you be certain? There's no one left who would die to carry out your orders. This has gone on long enough. What does that mean? David... ...wanted you to help people. Stop this hatred, Jenna! Isolation ward was hit. The patients are dying. We need help over here. We can't wait for the CDC. Hurry up with the ambulance. Damn, terrorists. Jenna, you mustn't hate them. No, don't leave me. Please don't. David! I know you'll... find... the cure. My... angel. No! You can't possibly be him! No. But David is a part of me. When people die, their data return to God. Since we are born of God, it is no surprise that their souls dwell in us. You're lying. David was killed by those fools and their ignorance. The Cuvier Syndrome isn't contagious, but they- He was content. Though his body perished, he had someone to carry on his will. Stop it! He took pride in his work. He loved people. And he loved you. You don't know anything!
Is this what you wanted? You're just data. Then there were three, but I'm afraid this is only just the beginning. While Gale bought you time, Surf, Sarah, and Cielo were able to find a functional jet to take them to the facility, but there are still people trying to pursue your party. So now it's Cielo's turn. Jeez, leave us alone. Hey, bro! your pretty face go, huh? Come on, smile! I'll meet you in Nirvana, ja? You asked for it! Here I Surf and Sarah. Thanks to your comrade's sacrifices, you finally made it to the facility. The last hope you had at communicating with God and saving the world. The two of you make your way through the dusty old research station. Sarah makes the preparations necessary to transmit her data directly to God. works. I'm glad. I, I'm all right. We have to get started now. All right then. I'll start transmitting our data to God. Just 
like that everyone is dead. However, their data isn't. Like the cat said before, all data on this world, every living thing here, eventually returns to God as data. It's an endless cycle that has repeated itself for as long as the world has stood. And, well, it's about to repeat here. Surf have become one being, Seraph. And well, seeing as we're all just data anyways, it's only fitting that we reunite with all our friends from the past. You're not alone at all, even here, you'll always have your comrades. Still, we are currently inside God's Domain, a strange, otherworldly place where any number of dangers could be lurking in any corner. If you're not careful, your very consciousness itself could be absorbed by God's might and erased forever. So, who better to have by our side than the old Embryon crew? Are you ready? Let's go. Let's do this. This is something you have to do. Hey, lighten up already. I'm here for you. Oh, we all cruise back together. Makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Even Janana and Lupa show up to give Argilla and Gale a bit of extra firepower. All right. Just one dungeon left. One standing between us and God himself. And oh my fucking god, it is one hell of a dungeon. But despite the danger, despite the fact that powerful and possibly familiar faces will lurk at every corner, there's nothing that can stop us combined. Together, we're gonna make it to God and prove to him that humanity isn't worth giving up on.
so, at last, you finally make it to God himself, the great creator, the ancient entity that has existed since time immemorial. How will your group possibly convince such a being to forgive all of humanity? Well, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. It is really anticlimactic. Here is literally what happens. You show up to God. He's like a gigantic brain thing. Seraph asks him, please forgive humanity. God opens up and turns into this giant, multi-headed uh, stone pillar thing and tells you to fight him. Then you do. Then you win, then God tells you the secret of the universe or something, which is apparently one word. And the day is saved, and the Earth returns to normal, and that's it. That's that's literally it. There's not even like a second form or anything. God's like not corrupt, it's just, uh, fight me, here's the secret of the universe, yeah, happy ending. But you know what? Whatever. While the destination may have been a bit of a dud, that doesn't change the fact that we've been through one wild journey to get here. We fought through gang wars, traversed the barrier between reality and fiction, defeated massive societies, traveled directly to the sun, and eaten just so many different people. So let's not dwell on things like this, and instead just enjoy the fact that ultimately, we managed to save the world. Careful, guys. Hey, Heat, don't run too fast, okay? Oh, come on. Surf and Sarah are way ahead of us. Hey, Fred. What is this leaf made out of? Data. Um, it's like people's thoughts. Data? People have always wondered about things. Questions like, who are we? Or what is this world really made of? They discovered molecules and atoms, and then they found even smaller particles. Finally, the most basic building block was so small that it could only be defined as data. You and the forest are essentially the same. It all goes back to people's thoughts. Thoughts are carried on until they return to their origins, and then... I don't really get it. It's okay. <laughs> I didn't either at your age. But now, I think I do. Where we came from, and where we're going. Come on, hurry 
up, Gale. Hold on! Jenna, let's go! Yes, our journey is just beginning. I pray that these children, who share their names with you, can find happiness. Don't worry, Fred. 